Hey, Jeffco, Dale Munholland here, and it's time for our Minute with the Contract. Today, we're going to look at Article 10, which is all about collaboration and shared leadership. I know this isn't a problem in any of our schools. This has never been a problem. I don't even know why this contract, this article is in the contract. Mm -hmm. Here's just a quick summary of what Article 10 is. There are decisions within the building that have to be made collectively with staff, classified staff, and with admin. Collaboration never is your admin standing in front of the, of the staff and saying, I made a decision and now I'm sharing it with you. So we're collaborating. There are people in the district who believe that. Mm -hmm. So away we go. Let's talk about it. Let's go down to Article 10.5, which kind of outlines uh, the different decision-making groups that you have to have in your building. Contractually, you have to have these three decision-making teams in your building. The operations leadership team, the uh, academic leadership team, and the proactive behavior safety team. They all have their own acronyms because we know education has never met an acronym that it didn't like. If it doesn't have an acronym in education, it just doesn't exist. So we've got acronyms, ALT, OLT, and P PBST. And they all uh, have their own decisions that they are involved in making, but their makeup is very, very similar. And their requirements are they have to meet uh, at least once a month. So your teams uh, at this point should have met at least three times, uh, hopefully more, uh, but at least three times. They have to have a meeting facilitator who kind of runs the meetings and sets the agenda. Here's a hint, hint, a winky, winky. Your meeting facilitator is not your admin. Admin is not your facilitator. Admin should never be the facilitator of these meetings. Just a hint, hint, a winky, winky. The facilitator should be somebody from the staff. Now, the admin can work collaboratively, collaboratively, collaboratively. Let's say it together, collaboratively with the facilitator. But the admin is never the facilitator. So you have a facilitator who helps set the agenda and, and um, run the meetings. Uh, you should also have a note taker uh, in the group. And there should be an agreed upon way of how to collect those notes and how those notes should be distributed to the staff. You should have norms that you follow within the meetings that everybody agrees to. This is how this meeting will operate. Uh, you need to have an agenda set ahead of time. Uh, anybody should be able to add to the agenda, and the agenda should not be made by the admin. The admin can add things to the agenda, but the admin are not the creator of the agenda. Um, there should be a note-taking process, and there should be a way to gather feedback from everybody in the building, uh, and there should be a way to use that feedback to make decisions. So those are the, the basics of these different groups. So let's get into what these different groups do. Let's go down. Um, oh, one thing before I, I forget. 1053, this is important. These, uh, each school should figure out within its school what a command decision is, what a collaborative decision is, and what a consultative decision is. So a command decision is uh, these are decisions made solely by the principal or by admin. They make these decisions and they're the only ones who make these decisions. Certainly, Admin should be able to make some decisions within the building, command decisions, but the building should decide, like, what do these decisions look like? A consultative decision is where the admin uh, will take advice and seek input from uh, stakeholders within the building, but then the admin are, are going to ultimately make that decision. And then collaborative decisions is where everybody comes together and together they arrive at a decision. Admin and, and educators and classified personnel and whoever else in the building, that is a collaborative decision. So buildings need to decide what's a command, only the principal, 
consultative, the principal with input from everybody, and a collaborative decision, which is everybody's involved. Okay, let's go down to the operational leadership team, which is in 10-6. Operational leadership team um, is made up of uh, a cross-section of all the grades within the school, if it's an elementary school, or uh, made up of departments, a cross-section of departments within secondary schools. This used to be department chairs, you know, it's basically the same department chairs, but, you know, we just changed the name, because if you change the name, of course, everything works better. Um, at, at least that's the way it seems to go in, in education. We'll just change the name, and, of course, this will work better. So uh, the operational leadership team, uh, the principal sits on it, there are uh, a cross-section of people from across the building, from grades or departments, including AMP or um, electives teachers within the building. And uh, what they work on, the goal of the OLT, is they're the ones that they, they set the calendars for the school. They set the scheduling for the school, the, the bell schedule. Um, they're the ones that will look at the budget and uh, help the uh, principal allocate the budget funds uh, within the school. Um, they are, are the ones who come up with the grading periods. They're the ones that um, uh, set the hiring practices and um, they're the ones that, that help with the staffing. They help with cl class configuration and size. They're the ones that they kind of do the operations within the building. Uh, so that's the OLT, Operational Leadership Team. 10-7 is all about the ALT, the Academic Leadership Team. Uh, on this team, very specific people have to be on this team. The building principal is a me member of this team. The instructional coach is a member of this team. The DTL is a member of this team. And then ideally a counselor or some other mental health provider within the building is on this team. And then, in addition to that, there have to be at least three other staff members on the AL team doesn't have to be three, it can be more. Uh, and again, it has to be a cross-section of grades in an elementary school or departments within secondary schools and also include in your uh, electives or um, uh, AMP teams. What the ALT looks like, they look at the academic side of, of the operations within the building. So they're the ones that are in charge of making sure that the district curriculum is being implemented. Um, they look at uh, instructional practices and norms across the building. They may look at grading uh, across the building and, and determine what type of grading uh, system wants to be implemented within the building. Um, they look at um, identification, they look, well, they're going to look at the scores within the building and try to make adjustments based on those scores, where are we doing well, where can we do uh, something better, and make adjustments uh, within the building on that. They're going to identify schools, or not schools, students, for school-wide interventions um, that need uh, some extra academic help, and they're going to identify, help identify those students and get them the academic sports supports that they're going to need. Um, so that's what the ALT does, the academic leadership team. They're in charge of all the academics within the school. And then there's the PBST team, uh, the proactive, savvy, proactive behavior safety team, or the Pabst Blue Ribbon team, which makes this team phenomenally awesome because who doesn't want to be on the Pabst Blue Ribbon team? Uh, so the Pabst Blue Ribbon team, they're in charge of behaviors. Uh, within the school, um, both negative and positive behaviors within the school. On this team, uh, you need a building administrator. It doesn't necessarily have to be the principal. It can be an assistant principal, but it has to be, there has to be a building administrator. One mental health provider on the team, uh, such as a counselor, social worker, psychologist, SEL, something like that. And then a minimum, again, of three teachers from across the building. It can be more, certainly more than three teachers from across the building uh, that are a cross-section of grade levels or departments. Uh, also include AMP and electives um, on this team. And so what they're going to look at, what they are in charge of, is uh, they're going to make your behavior and discipline matrix. Someone's at my front door. I better shut that off. Uh, they're going to make your behavior and uh, discipline matrix for the building and ensure that that is being followed 
by teachers as well as admin. Um, they're going to look at um, different uh, behavior supports that can be provided within the building to ensure that good behaviors are being uh, emulated and followed and encouraged and bad behaviors are, are not being, uh, um, are being discouraged and, and things are being done to, to ensure that those behaviors do not continue. Uh, they're also going to identify uh, students individual students who need additional behavior supports within the school, uh, tier one, tier three, uh, tier two uh, behavior supports. Um, so that's what they're in charge of. Um, these committees, these teams that you are required to have, these collaborative decision teams that you're required to have, have to be chosen, the, the people on the teams have to be chosen by the staff members by the licensed uh, educators within the building. Admin cannot put on people, their own people on these teams. Admin can't pick and choose which educator will be on these teams. Oh, a nay nay. Has to be chosen by the educators within the building. They're the ones who determine their representatives on this committee. Um, again, admin is not the facilitator. Admin are not the agenda creators. Uh, those are done, both of those are done by um, licensed staff who are on the, on the teams, ideally the facilitator. Um, the admin can certainly add things and, and help collaborate with the facilitator about what's going to be discussed in the meeting, but admin are not the, uh, the people who run these committees. They're not in charge of these committees. They're a part of the committees. Uh, and they work with these committees to make decisions uh, within the school for behavior, for academics, and then just for the general operations, day-to-day -day operations of the building. Uh, so that's Article 10. There's a lot more in Article 10, of course. Uh, it's really good reading. Uh, you should pick it up. It's, it's riveting sometime and, and just check it out. Uh, hopefully, you don't have these problems in your school. If you do have problems in these schools with, these, uh, with how these are run, let JCEA know, and the J JCEA and the district will actually come out to your school and do a training with these various groups and show you how these groups should be organized and how these uh, meetings should be run uh, so that it's in a collaborative way and not in a command way where the administrator's making all the decisions. Um, Hope this helps, and again, if you have any articles that you would like uh, to be touched on in the future, just let me know. Have a great day, Jeffco.